And a top of the morning to you. How are you people doing? What's new and exciting in your life? What I'd like to do now is to remind you some things about supplementations. And I'm going to specifically focus on some research that was put out in 2008 by Bolland et al. reference to calcium citrate. Now, most postmenopausal women will have their doctor will recommend that they take a calcium supplement just so they can strengthen their bones. The reason why they're having some challenges would be because of their estrogen, pregnenolone, progestogen ratios, which have maybe gone a little bit AWOL. And that's brought in, obviously, through the changes that women go through when they no longer have periods, etc., etc. Now, here's the interesting bit. If I gave you a car and I didn't tell you what type of fuel to put in that car, it's guesswork. Now, you might think it's 50-50, but vehicles run on gas, run on petrol, run on diesel, some run on oil, maybe get some cars that can run on water. So, what's the right fuel for the vehicle I've just given you? If I told you, then you wouldn't think about changing it. You would then continue putting that fuel in, assuming that your vehicle carried on running with no problems, and that was the right fuel. Now, supplementation means supplementary. So my recommendation is that you people consume foods. So if your doctor recommends that you up your calcium, what could you consume that contains calcium that your body can bioavailably extract from the foods? It's a question. And your answer would probably be the greens and fish. Go for the smaller fish, the mackerel and the sardines type rather than the big tuna because the bigger fish contain mercury, cadmium, heavy metal, PCBs, and we haven't got enough time to run through that. So, obviously I would recommend foods come first, secondary will be supplements. However, if you went to your health food store, if you got a, a good practitioner there, they would say, well, what type of calcium would you like to take? And just to remind you, there's calcium citrate, there's calcium chloride, and there's calcium aspartate. Which one do you take? This research showed that calcium citrate in postmenopausal women over a five year period increased their chances twofold of creating an MI, a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. And the research also showed that there was an increase in coronary artery calcification. Not good. I personally would be concerned by that. So, what do you do? Well, obviously, like the car analogy, you need to know what type of calcium would be right for you. If you drink an increase in milk, say, you've got a problem. Remember, we're the only dumb species on the planet that drink milk beyond our weaning years, and we obviously need, amongst other things, certainly um, lactate to convert from the lactose in our bodies. So if we haven't got the right enzyme, we've got a problem there. And we're the only dumber species that drink somebody else's milk. Interesting. So the research that I got in the US clearly showed that when people upped their pasteurized milk, they also increased, wait for it, their susceptibility to chances of gaining osteoporosis. Paradoxical irony. Hmm. Anyway probably because the beta protein structure's changed, and what it's showing is that it's affecting the pH of your body. Remember, the pH of your body should be between, depending on which research you want to believe, 7.2 and 7.45. Venus return, that's the pH. When I measure my client's pH, saliva, and urine, that's obviously going to be lower. But when it's from Venus return, it should be between 7.2 and 7.45. However, if you just, your body twinkles with that, depending on how, what fuel or, or you're drinking or eating, and if it obviously lowers, then the chances are you are then your body's going to need to extract the calcium and the phosphorus and other minerals from your bones in order to buffer the acidic body. So drink loads of milk and that'll do it for you. Make your body more acidic. Anyway, coming back to the research, it also showed that there were um, some missing areas and that was what's the magnesium level like? They hadn't measured that so they don't know. So they're just focusing on calcium and remember your body doesn't work in isolation, it works as a whole. The other missing uh, bit in the research was their vitamin uh, D levels. That wasn't looked at. 
Because remember I said about a deficiency which could lead on to rickets. Yes, you need calcium, but yes, you need magnesium, and obviously you need vitamin D. It's not a vitamin, actually, it's a pre-hormone. Also, what is your vitamin K levels like? Now, I find all this interesting, because I said it's not just about one thing, but we're focusing on calcium. My recommendation, if you take a supplement, that it obviously doesn't have just one thing. So, the research I found interesting, but what I want to remind you from a metabolic typing point of view, and do your own research, read Biochemical Individuality by Dr. Roger Williams, read Nutrition and Your Mind by Dr. George Watson, read The Metabolic Typing Diet by Walcott and Fahey, read Dr. Peter D'Adamo's work on blood group, read Dr. Abravanel's work on body type. There are many different, but don't believe everything that you read. Read How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy by Paul Check. There's many great books out there that you can read if you want to find out a little bit more about this and take control of your own health and not become a victim and start popping pills. So, I mean, you know this, but I'll remind you again. There are no pills, no potions, no supplements, no elixir or panacea found in a bottle. Only your body will heal itself when it's given the right menu. But what is the right menu? Well, from a metabolic typing point of view, if you are classed as a fast oxidizer like I am, I talk quickly, the conversion of food into energy is very quick, I require more fat and protein, then the type of calcium supplementation I require will be calcium citrate. However, I'm also going to take it with magnesium. Calcium magnesium, two to one ratio. So I might take up to 1,200 milligrams of the stuff a day. I don't. That's if I was a woman postmenopausal. I would take 1,200 milligrams, but I'd also need to take at least 500 milligrams of, say, magnesium. Most research shows in the US that Americans have a 6 to 1 ratio of calcium magnesium. Not good. If you were a parasympathetic type from a metabolic typing point of view, then you already have an alkaline body. So you require more acidic type calcium, and that would be calcium chloride or calcium aspartate. So that would be the right calcium for you to take. But what's the right one? Well, you obviously need to know your metabolic type. Read the book. Find out if it makes sense to you. I hope with these recording, I'm inviting you on that journey for you to want to take control and to find humour in this journey as well and to enjoy it. Remember, it takes no more energy or effort to create what you want in your life than it does to create what you do not want. The meaning of it, when it equals pleasure, your motivation is there to do it. When the meaning is a struggle, like even just upping your water intake, how do people do that daily? Well, it's a hassle, it's a challenge. Well, the meaning's that to you. But when the meaning changes, I'll guarantee your motivation is there to do it. No problem. So, supplementation is secondary. The primary would be eating the foods. However, postmenopausal women, if you do take a supplement, find out your metabolic type. Otherwise, it'd be just like, well, what fuel do I put in this vehicle? No one's told me. I don't know. Calcium citrate, um, calcium chloride, or calcium aspartate. Those are the ones that you would need to find out. But with the metabolic typing, if, you're, if you already have an acidic body like myself, because the conversion of food into energy is very quick, then I require more alkaline type calcium, which would be the citrate. If you have an alkaline body, then you require more of the um, aspartate or you would require more of the chloride. The reason I'm also referring to some of the notes that I made here is because I want to make sure that the important messages got across here. So that the research also, when it was to do with taking calcium su supplementation, was to do with one gram. And it was in the British Medical Journal, as I say, 2008 by Bolland et al. Do your own research on the website, see if you can find that. So interesting, but the missing links, vitamin D, also part vitamin K, and obviously magnesium, they're all important. Remember, the body works as a whole, it doesn't work in isolation. Please have a fantastic day, my love to you all, enjoy your journey, bye for now.